Well, let me just add to what uh, Senator Graham just said. Look at what's happened already based upon what they've spent on a party line basis earlier this year. A 3.6 percent pay increase has actually turned out to be a 2 percent pay cut. And the reason for that, inflation is driving the cost of everything through the roof. More broadly, they're playing Russian roulette with our economy. Russian roulette with our economy. The amount of spending and taxing and debt is really threatening the financial st stability of our country. We don't tend to have play any part in contributing to this. And it's still my hope that a few Democrats may be brave enough uh, to stop this. I think it's a catastrophic direction for our country. Well, the Democrats seem determined to bankrupt America. I mean, this reckless tax and spending spree is, as Lindsay has said, uh, the ultimate liberal wish list. With taxes and spending and regulations that are not just reckless, they're, they're scary when you really think about it. You know who's going to get, end up paying the bill for this? It's going to be middle class Americans. They're already paying through the roof with inflation. I was home last weekend in Wyoming. You go to the gas station, people are filling up the truck. It's $25 more to fill up now than it was on Janu in January. You go to the grocery store for people that are doing their weekly shopping, it's about $25 more for groceries than it was not that long ago. So they're paying more all over the place. And then you look at the taxes on top of it, it's going to hurt them doubly. But this kind of an additional $3.5 trillion of spending is going to be jet fuel on the flame of inflation. You know, it's interesting when you listen to the Democrats and they say, well, a couple of rich people and a couple of companies are going to end up paying for this. The American people aren't going to be deceived by this. They know who's going to be paying for it. Middle class Americans are going to be paying for it in all different ways. They're going to be left holding the bill. And then you listen to some of the Democrats on this $3.5 trillion massive bill, and they're saying things like, well, it is a good start. It doesn't go far enough for what they want. Because for them, no idea is too extreme. No cost is too high. Just mark my words, there's not a single Republican in the House or the Senate who's going to vote for this thing. And if, the, if there's any way it's going to pass, it's going to because Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer make every Democrat walk the plank. Senator Scott. Well, the reckless taxing and spending spree needs to end. And before it actually begins with the next iteration of it, it's really important. You think about the fact that uh, on Monday, I was getting ready to head to the airport, stopped by a gas station, put gas in my truck, $2.85 a gallon. So I literally said to myself, I can't remember what it was late last year, so I looked it up. Same, same gas station, Spruill Avenue, North Charleston, $1.99 a gallon last fall. Today, $2.85. Senator McConnell said it's so important. Literally during the midst of the pandemic, since then, Americans have seen a 3.5% increase in their wages, but inflation at 5.4% is an actual reduction in the take-home pay of everyday Americans. How do we see that? Well, we see that inflationary effect. Rental cars, 87% increase year on year. Used cars, 45%. Gas nationally, 45%. Laundry machines, they make, they make them in Samsung, at Samsung in Newberry, South Carolina, a 45% increase. Airfare is 24%. Moving expenses, 17%. Hotels, 16%. Furniture, 8%. Bacon. God knows we love bacon, even in our pizza. 8.4%. TV, 7%. Fruit, 7%. Shoes, 6%. Literally, the staples of American life are increasing exponentially. And that's before the inflationary effect of this next COVID, so to speak, relief package. If you listen to Larry Summers, as Lindsay said, You'd come to the conclusion that common sense ain't so common anymore. People keep asking us on this package, why can't you find common ground? Because there's no common sense. You got to have common sense to find common ground. John Poon. The bacon thing got me. Bacon. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. 
Well, what we're talking about here is the largest expansion uh, of government, the largest expansion in spending, and the largest tax increase uh, literally in the history of the country. And um, it's not going to be temporary. Uh, we all know how this works. Uh, Ronald Reagan once said, and I'm paraphrasing here, that the closest thing to immortality on this planet is a government program. Once this spending is locked in, it's going to be there permanently. And um, that is the, the vision that the Democrats have. It is a reckless, radical agenda, and the American people are going to end up paying for it. They're going to pay for it in the form of higher taxes. It's got, something's got to finance all this. Higher prices because of the inflation that's going to be caused by this massage, massive uh, flooding of, of uh, government money into the economy. And uh, they're going to pay for it in the form of lower wages. That's, that's what we're talking about. That is the simple uh, fact of the matter. And uh, we are going to stand with middle class Americans and do everything we can to stop it. Chuck Schumer said that they're going to keep their foot on the gas. And in this case, uh, that uh, gas is what they're going to be pouring on the fire out there. Uh, and that, uh, that fire is going to dramatically hurt uh, people in this country, working Americans, middle class, lower income Americans who have to deal with the higher taxes, the higher gasoline prices, the higher food prices, the higher pro prices across the board that will inevitably result uh, as a result of these reckless and radical policies uh, that are being put in place uh, by the Democrats here in the Senate. So we will do everything we can to stop it, and um, and we stand with the American people in, in that uh, in that effort. Senator Ernst. Thank you. And the gas there pouring on those flames is a lot more expensive now than it used to be. Um, you know, our, folks, our hardworking families are already feeling uh, the burden from these rising costs of goods and services, things like paper towels and diapers, just everyday items that our families need. And yet the Democrats are trying to ram through another three and a half trillion dollars of spending. Um, our key sector of the economy that's going to feel the pinch from the Democrats' reckless tax and spending spree is our farmers and our ranchers. Right now, the situation as it stands, our family businesses, when you pass them down, and this includes ranching and farming, when you pass those, those businesses down from one generation to the next generation, as often happens in ag country, it does not impose a tax burden on those families. But what the Democrats are proposing is to tax these families for simply passing on their business from one generation to the next. And if you don't think that's going to impact our food prices, you're wrong. You are wrong. Um, we call this the farm-to-table tax. That's what they are going to do in this next spending package, farm-to-table tax. So increasing uh, the taxes on our farmers, absolutely not the right thing to do, not now, not in the future. And it, just to put it into perspective, folks, we're already knocking on $30 trillion of debt. And adding to this burden, it's not the time when we're battling inflation. And I can say, honest to God, this type of reckless spending and taxing is never a good time. It is never a good time. Thank you. If you've been around Washington a while, you've learned not just to listen to what people say, but what they actually do. Senator Schumer is not giving the bipartisan infrastructure negotiations an opportunity to reach a conclusion and then to share that with the other members of the Senate and for us to have the sort of debate uh, that we should have when we're looking at spending a trillion dollars plus. What he really wants to do, I believe, is to roll that infrastructure spending into this uh, reckless tax and spending spree bill the three and a half trillion dollars, which actually ends up being five and a half trillion dollars, on top of all the money that we've spent uh, for COVID-19 relief that was bipartisan, at least last year it was, because we thought it was important from a public health and from an economic standpoint that us 
throw a lifeline to people who needed, needed help. But this is something totally different. And as you've heard, there's more and more money coming from the federal government chasing fewer goods and services, driving up prices. And this is actually all part of Senator Schumer's and Speaker Pelosi's plan. President Biden really let the cat out of the bag when he said, well, we have a deal on the infrastructure package, but it's not going to go anywhere until I sign this spending, this uh, reckless taxation and spending spree bill that uh, Speaker Pelosi said she would sit on until both of them were in her hands and she could force, coerce all the Democrats to vote for it. So we, this is not a time, if there ever was one, for the federal government to continue spending this kind of money recklessly. Borrowed money, it's going to have to be paid back by future generations. I think we're approaching now a debt-to-GDP ratio that we haven't experienced since World War II. Thanks. If there's a word I keep hearing over and over today, it's the word reckless. Reckless spending, reckless tax increases, reckless policies on the southern border. The sad reality is it's having consequences on the American people and the, on Montanans. The Wall Street Journal yesterday, if you saw the story, talked about the most expensive price appreciation in the real estate market was in which market in the entire country? Billings. It was Billings, Montana. I was in Billings on Friday. I had a roundtable with law enforcement, the sheriff, the police chief, county commissioners, district attorney. Homicide rates are skyrocketing. Felony rates are skyrocketing, unlike they've ever seen before. And I asked them, why? What's going on? They said, it's meth. 80% of the violent crimes and petty crimes are the results of meth and drugs. And then I asked the question, and I knew the answer, but I want to hear it from them. Where is it coming from? So it's coming from the southern border. We are a northern border state with a southern border crisis. The challenge we have with this reckless spending and tax bill that the Democrats are trying to push through on a purely partisan basis is that inflation is the most regressive tax on working Americans. The less money you have, the more you're impacted by inflation. If there's somebody who's cheering right now by what's going on in Washington with what Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi and the president are trying to jam through the Senate, it's China. Raising tax rates, raising inflation, massive spending will reduce our ability to compete in this economy, both short and long term. And sadly, those will be affected the most by what's going on here in Washington, D.C., with those who can afford it the least, and that'd be hard working class Americans. So I'll, I'll bat clean up here. Uh, I'll try not to repeat the excellent points my colleagues made, other than to reinforce one. I, I want the American people to truly understand who will pay for this reckless tax and spending spree. They will. E either th through the fact that the inflation will wipe out any wage gains, or eventually increase taxes. That is what will happen. But, but I want to make two points. I want to also talk about when you hear Maya McGinnis's group saying this isn't $3.5 trillion, this is going to be more like five, it's easy to explain how this is going to happen. Democrats will pass new entitlements, make more Americans dependent on government, and they'll only pass them and score them for a couple of years. But we all know government ratchets only in one direction, up. So once you have a new entitlement granted, it's almost impossible to remove it. And so whatever, they, whatever the headline number on this thing is going to be, it's going to be much larger than $3.5 trillion. The other thing we're talking about is inflation. I want to talk about the specter of stagflation. Now, back in Wisconsin, I don't think there's you know, hardly any employer that can hire enough people. Now, I come from a manufacturing background. Uh, our home builder said that the price of a home in Wisconsin has increased $36,000 because of the cost of lumber. And they can't get the components. They can't get the appliances. Every manufacturer, whether it's you know, a basic component like plastic resin, it's on allocation. So the, the fact that we have paid people not to work, employers are having to shut down lines, which is causing a supply dislocation. So we don't have the supply. And of course, inflation is caused by too many dollars, which the Fed is printing with all this deficit spending, chasing too few goods. And we've jammed up our manufacturing process so we don't have the goods. 
So that, that is the definition of stagflation. I lived through it in the late 70s. It's not fun. It's even less fun trying to break that, that cycle, but that's exactly what the Biden administration is putting us on a path towards stagflation. Uncontrolled inflation combined with uh, a stagnant economy, uh, it's not a pretty sight. Uh, John, can you stay around? I've got to scoot in a second. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, as you know, the, the, the debt limit. All hard questions will go to him, yeah. As you know, the debt limit's nearing uh, expiration. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk about the debt, debt limit next week. We're talking about the uh, package today. I'll give you my view of the debt limit next week. Yeah. Can I just ask, you know, as, as the reconciliation bill and the bipartisan infrastructure bill move yeah. on a similar sort of timeline, right. does the reconciliation bill moving forward have any impact on how you may vote on the infrastructure bill or will you evaluate that independently of this separate well, process? Well, since I'm in the group, there's things I'm for and there's things I'm against. Senator, uh, uh, President Trump had a $1.5 trillion infrastructure package. I think everybody up here understands roads, bridges, ports, particularly in South Carolina. America could use a facelift on its basic infrastructure, and there's bipartisan support for that. But with the $3.5 trillion package, it's not about infrastructure. It's about growing the size of government. It's about using an opportunity to change tax rates to be more just in their eyes. And the big loser, as uh, Ron said, is the, uh, the American consumer. So I'm for infrastructure, roads, bridges, ports paid for. I'm not for an explosion of the size of government. And as John said, the closest thing to immortality is a new government program. We all know this is never going to go away. I think this is a defining debate, one of the many in the 2022 election cycle. So there would be plenty of Republicans on board for bipartisanship when it comes to infrastructure reasonably um, uh, defined. There's going to be none of us, none of us, for this three and a half, really five trillion dollar package. You've got to ask yourself the question why. Why would you be for one and not the other? One makes sense. One will help the economy. The other will take inflation to new heights. And if you don't believe me, just ask Larry Summers. I got to run. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, I mean, the one piece of leverage you guys do have, at least for the next month, is on the debt limit. Um, potentially, if there is a clean <clears throat> debt limit bill that's brought to the floor. Would Republicans actually filibuster a clean debt limit increase uh, before reconciliation happens? Well, I think Lindsey said, and he's our ranker on the Budget Committee, that he will talk about. You've, you've heard what uh, Senator McConnell has said on that subject. Um, I don't think there's any appetite among our members to vote for a big increase in the debt limit uh, when they're in the process of adding so much to the debt. I mean, they're talking about spending three and a half, or as Ron and others have pointed out, really uh, more than $5 trillion if you take away the budgetary gimmicks. And, you know, you, you would think, based on what they're talking about doing, that Bernie Sanders had won the election. I mean, this is a, this is a far left, uh, progressive, um, you know, agenda. And uh, they're trying, they're going to do everything at 51 votes. And, you know, my view is, and I can't speak for all our members in our conference, is that they ought to, the debt limit uh, ought to ride on all the other stuff they want to do. I don't think Republicans want to enable them to spend uh, trillions and trillions of dollars that uh, we believe are simply designed to grow government. Well, let me just quick, because I'll address it a little bit as well, seeing as we're the only two that stuck around here. Um, since I've been, elected since I came here in 2011. We've increased or suspended the debt ceiling nine times. I came here with $14 trillion in debt. Now we're, you know, fast approaching 30, I think about $28.5 trillion worth of debt. In the past, and I think the reason you have something called a debt ceiling is when you reach it, you think long and hard about increasing it. And in the past, for example, the Budget Control Act, during one of those fights over increased the debt ceiling, we actually instilled some fiscal discipline and reduced uh, discretionary spending for a couple of years by having a real fiscal discipline. So from my standpoint, I can only speak for myself, it, if we increase the debt ceiling, we ought to get some measure of fiscal control. And we've had discussions, you know, you've got the Romney Trust Act, you've got Full Faith and Credit Act, you, Rick Scott has a piece of legislation. You know, one of the things I would propose is the Preventing Government Shutdown Act. A very common sense proposal, we've, I think we passed it twice, 
out of my committee when I was chairman of Homeland Security. And, and all it does is it says if you can't get your act together, pass a budget, pass appropriation bills, you don't shut down government, which costs a lot of money. It's very inefficient. A lot of people get hurt. You just fund those agencies at last year's level. In Entirely reasonable. Now, for some reason, it's been hard to get a vote on that. This would be a good time to get a vote on something like that. I think we're probably done. Okay, one more. One more question. Do you think, it sounds like Democrats want to do the debt limit increase by regular order. Is this a way for them to kind of, you know, broaden responsibility for the debt you've talked about today? Well, I think they'd like to do, they would like to, anything to get Republican fingerprints on um, all these uh, crazy policies that they're proposing. And um, I don't know why any Republican would want to, uh, to allow that to happen. Um, you know, the debt limit has in the past been carried on reconciliation. And in light of the context of what we're talking about here, which is, as I said before, the biggest expansion of government, biggest tax increase in American history, um, and doing it all of it 51, and furthermore, believe it, they would do it in a New York minute if they had the votes, they would get rid of the legislative filibuster and they'd pass their entire agenda at 51. So I don't know why Republicans uh, would want to uh, help, I said, as I said, enable um, the massive amount of taxing that they want to do and the incredible harm that we believe it would do to the American economy and to American consumers who are going to bear the cost both of uh, higher taxes, but also higher prices for everything uh, as inflation continues to take off. This is a prescription for um, disaster, I think, economic disaster, but they seem um, bent on plowing forward with it, and I think it's a big mistake. I mean, you could just vote against the final bill uh -huh. and have it be, you know, bills don't have to pass with 60 votes. You can just not force a cloture vote. There's a vote, and then you force them to walk the plank. It'd still be a 51-50 issue. And I'm and I'm not saying I, I, none of those. I don't think anything other than what uh, Senator McConnell has said about this. You know, that, as Lindsey said, that's prospective. That's down the road, and I don't think any final decisions have been made about how that might be handled on the floor. But I'm just telling you, as a matter of principle, I don't think there's a single Republican senator who um, views increasing the debt limit so that Democrats can expand government and spend massive amounts of money uh, is something that they, in the end, would want to want to support. Last question. Can I do one on the, Last going back to the 3.5 real quick? So economists are saying that the twin legislation packages will provide, quote, a massive boost to the economy, and both are essential. Families uh, use the stimulus checks from the American Rescue Plan, benefited from those. They Democrats say there's continued help in these plans, child care, et cetera. How do you explain it to families in your states uh, being against these plans? and these packages here? Well, we've increased debt over the last 18 months by $5 trillion. In 2020 alone, personal t savings increased $1.6 trillion. Uh, per capita, real disposable income increased something like 5.5%. So there is so much money sloshing around. We don't need more stimulus. I mean, that's what Larry Summers talking about. We have way too much money, quite honestly, sloshing, along, sloshing around versus the, the supply of goods that are out there. That's what's going to spark inflation. So we just don't need all this spending. What we ought to do is make sure we have a competitive tax system. Let's not overregulate the economy. You know, let's end the disaster at the border. I mean, there are problems we need to fix in this country. One of the problems that we doesn't need fixing is we don't need more money in the economy. It has plenty. Okay, right, thank thanks you. Thanks, everybody.